What breed of horse was a Trojan horse? And they didn't. Yeah. Thanks, Tiff. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to want to meet Tiff one day. <laughs> you what? Tiff is brilliant. <laughs> Hello and welcome to A Matter of Fact. With me this week I have Max Wilkins. Hello. Simon Egan. Hi. Laura Stevens. Hello. And I'm your host Kirby Rawstorn. For our third episode, the topic is Ancient Greece, a group of cities, kingdoms and principalities that existed where the country of Greece now resides today. So, round three is achievements. And for starters, I'm going to go first. Now, this is not to be taken literally... <laughs> Just, just say it, just try this one out here right now. I haven't even heard it yet. The name of the podcast incidentally is a matter of fact. So the ancient Greeks are responsible for gamer points. I'm sorry, can you say that again? The topic being achievements. Colour me interested, I'm listening. Right. So, as in the points you get when you gain an achievement on the Xbox, amongst a lot of other things, I don't know what consoles are available. Though why you'd buy them, I really don't know. Oh. Sony oh, PlayStation. Shame. Oh no, PlayStation. Wanna, Fair enough. I understand. I want to hear the, the game. I think. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Amongst a lot of other things that you wouldn't expect, the Greeks invented the first known analog computer. Uh, it was a small box filled with moving parts that, when you turned the handle, would calculate the movement of the planets to a pretty specific degree. As in, even now, it's only a little bit out. So, as we know, since then, computers have gone from strength to strength with Charles Babbage's programmable computer, Colossus from World War II, and eventually Microsoft Xbox, featuring gamer points and achievements. Now, those two are not directly related, I am aware, because people aren't really aware that the Greeks invented a computer, but historically speaking, Greeks are responsible for Uh, gamer points and achievements. Bit of a stretch, like really, isn't it? It is a bit of a stretch. You. <laughs> if, you, if, if you win this round, do I get the point because I came up with a computer thing? <laughs> Max, you don't get no, you came up with being being actually interested in what we're talking about. <laughs> Sorry. We're all in. I'd never, I'd I never see. win a round. <laughs> I think you're interesting, Simon. No, I said if I'm not interested in something. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm the only one without a point. And to be fair, for for other. Um, People who are big into their computers and stuff like that. There are a lot more stuff in between those three points that Kirby made. But I, I was kind of trying to keep it, you know, it was succinct quite, and uh, well, interesting. To be fair, yeah. it, was, it was quite a big... Those three jumps were quite the ancient Greeks... Mm. To World War Two. It was still made of... To so modern day. That's, World War II. that's quite a big jump. <coughs> yeah, yeah. But they are the ones that most people are aware of. They are, they are, yeah. But they're also the only ones that were in the paragraph that you read. No, they weren't in the paragraph I read. I looked them up independently because I knew about them already, god damn it! What kind of food? He's winding you up, Kelly. Don't bite. Don't bite. <laughs> right, Max, I, I believe you have something to tell us. Uh, yes, my uh, fact about achievements is um, medicine in general, and more specifically the Hippocratic Oath. Um, the medicinal practice in ancient Greek was a very fascinating um, level of achievement. By the 5th century BCE, um, they moved from a more judgment of the gods to a diagnosis and cure um, way of looking at medicine. And this cast a stark contrast with the more relatively more modern European Dark Age medicine, which was essentially slap a poultice on it and shove a wash pipe up your ass, and you'll get better over a couple of weeks. Doesn't work. Depends on the wash pipe. <laughs> One of the more notable achievements of the ancient Greek uh, medicinal practices was the birth of the Hippocratic Oath, um, named after Hippocrates, or possibly one of his students that wrote it in the 5th to the 3rd century BCE. And it is taken by doctors then and now upon the completion of their training. Uh, The first paragraph of which, when I read it, made me uh, chuckle a little bit, and I will quote it. Quote, to hold my teacher in this art equal to my own parents, to make him partner in my livelihood, when he is in need of money to share mine with him, to consider his family as my own brothers, and to teach them this art if they want to learn it without fee or indenture. So basically, when my doctor it, gets sued... It, it goes on to mention something about not causing harm or killing patients purposefully, but the main thing is the first paragraph. Ooh. It, they just covered their own ass, essentially, with the Hippocratic Oath. When this doctor who has taught his student is destitute, you will share your money with him, 
and give your training away for free. Um, considering the student loans that I imagine that are accrued in a doctorate of medicine today, sort of makes that a bit of a laughable... No, no, no. The, the interesting <laughs> thing is it's actually referenced in the first... Uh, I say referenced. It was the first episode, so it wasn't really referenced. Yeah, no, the Hippocratic... It was my fact. It was I your think. fact. Actually. Oh, yes. Thanks, Max. Thanks. I didn't hear the first one. No, 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 no. The fact was that Hippocrates did not come up with the Hippocratic Oath. It was just based... Named after him. Okay, so I'm sure we can splice in from the first one or not. We can quickly recap. So the Hippocratic Oath is attributed to Hippocrates, but there is no proof that he actually said, wrote, or put his name to any part of what is considered and now signed by modern-day doctors or doctors in um, in the past that have signed the Hippocratic Oath. It was just that he was so knowledgeable and informative of the belief of medicine practice, etc., that his name was attributed to him. What he did come up with, Max, is that... Hippocrates was the one that actually sort of came to realise the cause and effect of medicine itself. So you have a headache, you might be dehydrated, you might need sleep, there might be a malnourishment, that there was a thing that was wrong and there was a thing that you could do to cure. It wasn't just Zeus hates you. Hades hates you, etc., etc. Actually, hell, Max, it everybody was... hates you. <laughs> the second bullet point on my fact, I would like to say, by the 5th century BCE, incidentally, when Hippocrates started working, they moved from a judgment of the gods to the diagnosis and cure method of medicine. <laughs> so, but, so we covered it. No, we covered it. No, we covered it. <laughs> no, we covered it, Lauren. The Hippocratic Oath mm-hmm. cannot be attributed to Hippocrates. That. Or Hippocrates. Hippocrates. I Hippocrates. Or ancient Greece. What I would say is the person that did write the Hippocratic Oath was a lot more intelligent than Hippocrates because he did cover his own ass by Hippocrates. saying, when I ask you for a fiver, you're going to give me a fiver. <laughs> right, moving swiftly onwards, Laura. Okay, so my fact of achievements is Seven Wonders of the World, two of them are ancient Greek. I think that's a pretty hefty achievement if we can attribute anything to ancient Greeks. What are the seven wonders to I can't list all seven. I can tell you the two that are Greek. <laughs> what are the two that are Greek? Because I can name a couple of them. I can't Statue remember. Statue of Zeus. Yeah. Oh, and there's the one. Is that the one that goes over the bay? Colosseum of Rhodes. Okay. No, you're thinking of the, the, the Statue of the Titan. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. There are seven... Wonders of the world, or considered wonders of the world. Uh, there's been constant films and books about the eighth wandered world. Duh, duh. But of the traditionally listed seven wonders, two of them are ancient Greek. One of them being the statue of Zeus, and the other being the Colosseum of Rhodes. If that's not an achievement, I don't know what it is. Hmm. <laughs> Simon, your fact next. Uh, my fact. Okay. Um, not to pull at um, Max's or even Laura's first point. Oh, there we go. First point. But as as impressive as the Hippocratic Oath is, or not. and or not, and and the developments is your, is your fact in, the first in, in 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 medical and records of 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 um, ancient Greeks practicing medicine and having that sort of um, setup going on, I think what is actually more important and which actually sets a foundation for both of your points are was the ancient Greeks started to study, classify and um, record herbs, um, medicinal properties of things. You mean, uh, it's not just the fact that um, they had a set for the Hippocratic Oath mm-hmm. or, or the fact that they had doctors and whatever. They're the first recorded society to actually start cataloging these things actually writing it down on paper now it's not your you go to the local um, um, witch doctor mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. he's been taught all this stuff you the ancient the Greeks herb store yeah but it's not even that the ancient Greeks started to catalogue these things they, they, they didn't just go oh this herb is good for this they studied it they categorised it and they catalogued it which meant that it, they built the foundation of modern medicine is based in ancient Greece because that's when they first started to look into properly saying, okay, this herb is good for 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 a headache, or this good is uh, this herb or this plant is very good for wounds on the battlefield. They actually studied to see that the plants 
for a scar for a, a wound on the battlefield, it actually helped the blood coagulate and form a scab to heal over. It's the first herbologists. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's the, Researchers. It's the, research. It's the fact that Science, they started to catalogue it, write it down and save it for future generations. <laughs> Whereas before everything was hand in mouth, taught from one generation to the next. Yeah. They're the first um, society in history that, act, well, recorded society in history because, let's face it, there are older um, societies around the world, but we don't have any information for them when, when they were going on. The Greeks, the ancient Greeks were the first ones to actually start to look at something and say, okay, this is good for whatever. Why? Not to bring the, the festivities down. But, um, <laughs> I still like the fact that they had a herb store. For round three, we have got my ancient gamer point, we've got Max's Hippocratic Oath, Laura's 12 Wonders of the World, and Simon's Plant Catalogue. <laughs> Max, who are you voting for? I'm actually going to go with Simon for this one, mainly because I spent the majority of his explanation of that fact nodding like I was listening to a politician who was actually, you know, persuading me towards his argument. I'm supposed to be against him, but I was stood here, well, sat here just going, hmm, yeah, hmm, yeah, yeah, herbs, yeah, that's really interesting. <laughs> no, genuinely, I was. I was genuinely nodding away, so I'm going to go with Simon. Herbs, interesting. Okay, Laura, how about you? Okay, so my vote is going to have to be for Kirby. Simon, what about you? Yeah, no, same as um, and Laura. I think your yours was actually a lot harder to pull holes in. Okay, cool. Um, in that case, I am going to go with uh, Laura's Twelve Wonders, actually, because I just quite like the Twelve Wonders. <laughs> 